I'm calling this Casio edifice the Droog because its coloring matches the attire of Droogs, which were members of a gang of hoodlums in Stanley Kubrick's great movie, A Clockwork Orange. The MSRP of the Droog is $180. I bought the Droog in December of 2019 at a discount from the Casio outlet for $102. There's a new blue dial variant of the Droog, which I recommend for reasons that I will discuss later. I found the blue dial variant selling as low as $116. Like the edifice I reviewed last year, which I named the Cherry Blossom, the Droog has a sapphire crystal and is solar powered. It, however, lacks all the bells and whistles that the Cherry Blossom has. The Droog comes in the same packaging as the Cherry Blossom. Since the Droog I'm reviewing is probably a return, some of the documentation might be missing. But here is what I have. A solar power guide. A warning telling me of the dire consequences of failing to remove the sticker on the back of the watch, which I did not adhere to. Information about Casio's very skimpy one-year warranty. A weird for California use only information sheet. And a user's guide, which is specific to the Drugs module 5529, which I appreciate. I'm not one to get sentimental about watch packaging, but I'm a real sucker for Casio's tins, especially their Edifice tins, which are nicer than their G-Shock tins. Instead of making you sit through the entire video and giving you the big reveal at the end, like a PBS documentary, I'm going to reveal everything now. I think that the Droog is a good value, and I endorse the watch, despite some major issues with the watch. The first of these major issues is that the stopwatch only measures up to 30 minutes. I did a cursory search of chronos made by one of Casio's closest competitors, Citizen Watch. I found an entry-level Citizen Chrono, a Bryson, which was priced about the same as the Droog. The Bryson had a 60-minute stopwatch, which is what I expect. The Bryson, like the Droog, is also solar-powered, but it lacks a great feature that the Droog has, a sapphire crystal. The second issue with the Droog is the bracelet. While it certainly looks and feels like a real bracelet, it's actually a fake bracelet. Its individual links are made of pressed metal rather than solid chunks of metal. Since I've never worn a fake bracelet for any extended period of time, I cannot speak about its long-term durability. I invite people who have long-term experience with edifice bracelets to comment about the bracelet's durability in the comment section. While the bracelet is fake, it wears like a real bracelet, and it's very comfortable. The Droog has something which many watches lack at the sub-$500 price point, a good clasp. Even the clasp of the Cherry Blossom, which cost me three times as much, had a sharp edge. The Droog and the Cherry Blossom clasps may look the same, but they're different. The Droog's clasp has a smoothed edge, and the smoothing was done very well. I can't begin to tell you the gratitude and elation I feel when I encounter a cheap watch that doesn't have a clasp with a sharp edge. The bracelet feels very light, which is not a surprise given that it's probably partially hollow. I was surprised to find that the bracelet was 22 millimeters in width as it wears like a 20 millimeter. The bracelet tapers down to its maximum extent of 19 and a half millimeters at the third link. The width of the clasp is 21 and a half millimeters. The clasp is a little rattly. This is a small price to pay for one of the greatest clasps you'll ever find at the sub $500 price point. The Droog's case is extremely cheesy looking. As you can clearly see from a side view of the case, the bezel is fake. It's a prop that does absolutely nothing but consume unnecessary space. The fake bezel has markings for 60 seconds, which makes no sense as the chapter ring already has markings for each second. The finishing of the case is not too easy on the eye. It's all polished with exception to the top of the lugs. The Droog's mostly polished case is a horrible mismatch with its mostly brushed bracelet. It's hard to find a worse case integration with the bracelet than this. 
Is all this fakeness and ugliness a deal breaker for me? No, not at the Droog's price point. The flat sapphire crystal sits above the bezel. It doesn't have anti-reflective coating. It doesn't have any issues with glare. The crown is nicely guarded and nicely signed. The pushers are nicely sized and placed. The case back is typical of Casio, modest and utilitarian. I like it. The Droog is a big watch. The good news is that, unlike the similarly sized Cherry Blossom, the Droog uses an ergonomic case design, and because of this, it wears much smaller than its large size suggests. The case diameter is 44.5 millimeters. The lug to lug is 51 millimeters. At 12 millimeters, the case isn't thick, though on the thick side for quartz. Operationally, the watch works very well. Unlike the Cherry Blossom, you don't need to read the manual to use most of its features. The first position of the crown is the date quick set, and the second position is the time set. The stopwatch operation is simple and intuitive. You press the top pusher to start, stop, and resume the stopwatch. The bottom pusher resets the stopwatch. The middle subdial indicates elapsed minutes of the stopwatch, and the bottom subdial indicates elapsed seconds in the stopwatch. The edifice does split time as well, but I'm going to refer those who are interested in this feature to the manual on how to use it. The Droog has a very nifty power indicator, which you can access by holding down the bottom pusher for a second. As you can see, the hand of the bottom subdial is pointing to H, indicating that the watch has at least four months of power left. The Droog can go up to five months without being charged by a light source. The Droog also has a low battery alert. The Droog has a very pretty dial, though it's not very easy to read, especially in low light, due to a lack of contrast. Because of this, I recommend buying the blue dial variant of the Droog. The indexes are nicely raised. The top subdial is a 24-hour clock. It has notches along its border, which help you to read the time. This feature is something I complained about the Cherry Blossom not having. The date is nice and big and readable. I'm fine with the handset, with exception to the second hand being too narrow for my tastes. The second hand is hitting the marks very poorly. The second hand doesn't have loom. I'm okay with the edifice logo, but I really don't like the two lines of awkwardly positioned text positioned under it. Casio is one of the industry leaders in cluttering up dials with useless text. The Droog has 100 meters of water resistance. This is good. You should be able to swim and shower with this watch. The Droog is 151 grams, sized for my 7-inch wrist, and 156 grams, unsized. The Droog is a light watch, but it isn't ultra-light. The Droog uses push pins. I took two pins out. I had some trouble reattaching the bracelet because the cotter pin kept missing the second hall when I hammered it in. Once I made absolutely sure that the links were firmly held together before hammering in the pin and then driving in the pin very slowly, I didn't have any more issues. The fakeness of the links might have contributed to making the sizing more difficult for me than normal. The Droog's loom sucks and doesn't even last a half an hour. In the past, I would have given such a cheap watch a pass on weak loom. But loom technology has gotten much better. We're now living in a loom renaissance. And even a cheap chrono like this should deliver four hours of readable loom. I really don't like fake bezels, and it's hard to get excited about a watch with a fake bracelet. The Droog is, however, a really cheap watch that has a lot of great features. For a little over $100, I'm getting a sapphire crystal and a solar quartz movement that even has a power level indicator. I love power level indicators. Also, I'm getting a comfortable watch with no sharp edges. It's challenging to find a comfortable watch with no sharp edges in the sub $500 price range. The fact that the Droog only has a 30 minute chrono bothers me but I conducted a thought experiment about this. What if the Droog wasn't a chrono? Would I still endorse it? 
The answer is yes. I believe the drug's positive aspects would still outweigh its negative aspects. The Droog isn't a very classy watch, but I think it's a good value proposition for people looking for a cheap watch who don't absolutely need a 60-minute chrono. Casio keeps churning out new edifices. I suspect that all edifices are basically cut out of the same mold, both literally and figuratively. If you decide to get another type of edifice, you just want to make sure that the watch has both solar power and a sapphire crystal. Hi, this is Bill Buzzkill Brattle, president of Watch Lab. We at Watch Lab are continuing to give you award-winning watch journalism during the worst pandemic since the Black Death. What are the popular so-called YouTube watch journalists bringing you during these trying times? Well, you got options. You can watch these Beverly Hills 90210 rejects play Guess That Watch. Or you can watch muscle-bound Aryans named Oleg take hammers to frozen fake G-Shocks. Yes, that's not even a real G-Shock. Oleg's French Bulldog is so disgusted with his Aryan master for occupying his glorious homeland of France that he won't even look at him. I have both fake and non-fake G-Shocks. I could have frozen these G-Shocks, taken a hammer to them like Oleg, but I choose not to because it's fluff, it's filler. I choose to continue to risk my life during this pandemic to bring you, the consumer, the best non-fake watch content on YouTube. The choice is yours, boobage or real content. I choose boobage, I mean real content.